So I've been doing some thinking lately about what would be the ideal uh, Mac for somebody who is legally blind. And what that means is they have some residual vision and they probably are able to use a magnifier, would maybe even ta teeter-totter between a magnifier and a screen reader. Now, if you're an exclusive screen reader user, perhaps this might not be best for you because screen size at that point does not matter. But if you're in the um, if you're in the area with for which a screen size does matter, the bigger the screen, the more real estate you have to work with, the less scrolling you have to do, the smoother experience you will have. And it is with that reason that I decided that we should configure a MacBook Pro 17 inch. Now this thing does weigh as much as an elephant, and it costs about as much as King Midas's gold collection. But, um, I honestly think it's worth it, especially since there's one option that's only available on this MacBook and not any other one, not the Air, uh, not the retired classic MacBooks. Um, the MacBook Pro 17-inch, uh, not even the lower-end MacBook Pros have this. The 17-inch is the only one with this, but we'll get to that in a moment. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to try to future-proof the system as much as possible. We're going to start by adding 8 gigs of RAM, and the reason, again, we're going to try to keep this ticking for about 5, 6, 7, 8 years. Another way to do that is to axe out the serial ATA drive and replace it with solid state. Now, I want to try to get the storage as close as possible to the 750 gig serial ATA drive, so I'm going to go for this 512 gig solid state disk. This is another option we're going to select is the anti-glare widescreen, and the reason for that is because if you're in a classroom or you're in a library or any other place where your um, lighting from overhead excuse me, could cause a lot of glare on a glossy screen, for somebody who's legally blind who's a magnifier user, that can be distracting. Because remember, 2200, oh, I should, I should explain, um, if I haven't already, legally blind, 2200 or worse. What that means is somebody who can see something at 200 feet, the person who's legally blind would have to see at 20. To add even more real estate and just make things a lot easier when you're at home, the MacBook Pro can be operated with the lid closed using, using an external keyboard, mouse, and monitor, sort of turning it into a desktop. And for that reason, I've decided to add the Thunderbolt 27-inch display, and that's going to add on an additional grand. We definitely want Apple Care, especially since let's take a look at our price so far. A little over five thousand dollars. Let's go ahead and add the one-to-one -one membership because let's assume that this is a new Mac user. There are many people who are. And if you want, you can go in and add the cables. Originally, when I was building this, I decided to add in the HDMI adapter. But I figured if I was going to go in and add the, the uh, Thunderbolt display in its place, then I didn't need any of the cables. So anyway, and also not everybody has an HDMI-capable TV. So our grand total then, let's take a look at our options again. So we want to future this, proof this as much as possible. So we got the 8 gigs of RAM. I didn't bother bumping up to the 2.5 because I didn't feel a 0.1 gigahertz speed increase was even worth it. Um because they're asking 250 for it. So we're getting the 8 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs solid state disk, 17-inch uh, anti-glare screen. The 17-inch is the only computer in Apple's lineup that has this. We're getting the Thunderbolt display, again, for desktop use. We're getting the Apple Care Protection Plan. We're getting the one-to-one. -one. We're not bothering with any, with any external cables because the Thunderbolt connection to the to the uh, laptop is built into the into the display itself. And um, the 17 inch again, you're legally blind. Definitely, the screen real estate does come in handy. Um, the bigger the screen, the better the experience. And also, the anti glare um, 
you don't want that glare coming off your screen because if you're trying to read something, that glare only makes it a lot worse. So in total, fifty-two ninety-six. That's not cheap. But the way I look at it is that it's worth every penny. Now, some of you are going to say, well, what about the PC option? I'm not familiar with the, the PC options at this time. One other thing, though, that you do gain with the Macintosh is if your vision deteriorates down the line and your computer, you're still using your computer every day, the Macintosh is the only computer that I've seen where you can come up to it, hit a keystroke, and it starts talking to you immediately and walks you through how to use the onboard screen reading technology, which means that if you do lose your vision, you don't have to give up, you don't have to give up your computer, you don't have to spend an additional thousand dollars on screen access technology, or have to worry about um, about uh, the hurdles of uh, free screen access technology, such as NVDA, where commercial support is lacking. But um, oh, and also, if you wanted to, you could run Windows on your Mac. But that's the way I look at it. What do you guys think? Thank you for watching. Comments are welcome and have a nice day.